morning diesel heads another one for you this is a rivers 2.5 silver streak or is it a silver arrow? silver streak yeah a pretty rare item these days um, made about 1960 by the Rivers Company in Felton, Middlesex. This is, as you will see, an Oliver Tiger look-alike, radial ported, twin bearings in the crankshaft, on the crankshaft, and extremely well made like its bigger brother, the three and a half. Burt Rivers made this um, to compete with and in his hopes obviously to be better performing than the Oliver Tiger. It seems from the records that uh, he didn't quite make it. But it's a damn fine engine and to be honest I wouldn't know the difference in performance if it ran me over. This one comes from a, a huge collection of a very well-known and now, alas, sadly missed collector David Owen. Uh, his collection is being dispersed uh, right now and this is uh, one of his. I suspect he got it from new it's certainly been run, but it hadn't been run when I got it for a long time because it was pretty well gummed up. The seller, uh, Steve, who's dispersing the collection, describes all his engines very honestly. And he said this one was pristine, and it, and it is, it certainly is. It's, compress it's got compression in droves, better than a new engine I've had at two and a half. And I did degum it for a couple of days to loosen him up, and the thing, believe it or not, fired. First flick. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, the Burt Rivers, or the Rivers story, is, is, is a bit of a sad one. He was obviously a, an extremely good engineer because he made bits for the Air Force for um, aircraft such as the English Electric Lightning. You remember that cigar tube with wings? and a vertical takeoff and landing tilting rotor is it a helicopter or a plane i don't know machine as well so he was, a, he was a respected engineer and a very good one and he made these these two engines uh, that we we're talking about the interesting facts about this one on the inside which i can't show you because it's, it's not in bits but the bearings, um, not sure whether you can see that, are not ball bearings around the crankshaft, but are, where's the pencil gone? Needle bearings, or roller bearings they're called. There's, there's one at the front and back, and they're basically one and a half millimeter diameter needles interspersed with a spacer, which is slightly elliptical in section. And these just fit around the crankshaft of the front and the back. They're more or less free, except they can't move forward or backward. Uh, so if you take the engine to bits, it's great fun because they all fall out. And you think, how the heck am I going to get those back together again? So the trick is to put the crankshaft, uh, slobber it in some grease, put it in the freezer or the fridge with the needles and the spacers. Uh, to cool down and then you stick the needles and the spaces on the crankshaft before it warms up and get the crankshaft back in the casing. Simple, but it works. Um, this is a Mark II version I think. Uh, not many of the Mark I's were made and it has the nice little hexagonal nut on the cylinder head to stop the compression screw from moving. Uh, the story is about rivers. Uh, you may know that 
there was a period in the 60s when these things were uh, under scrutiny for being eligible for what we used to call purchase tax for VAT and um, some manufacturers deducted it in case they were clobbered for it and then handed it back to the buyers if it didn't come along others didn't do anything about it and I think Rivers didn't collect it and was stung for a lot of purchase tax in any event the other story Malud allegedly is that he sent a load of these to America and never got paid but between the two Sadly, um, it brought the early demise of the Rivers Company and Bert spent his last days running a post office somewhere in the home counties. This machine, like the Oliver, was meant to give you a plane that would do 100 laps, uh, sorry, 20 laps at about 100 miles an hour on a tank full of fuel, whatever size the tank was, I'm not sure. I think this would be slightly thirstier than the Oliver and that was one reason why it didn't quite do the job. But it's a brilliant engine, uh, I'm really pleased to get it and I will show you another vid when it's fired up on the bench because this one really is a belter. So that's the river story, uh, I don't think there's another one on YouTube but you never know, um, either way it's a rare and beautiful engine. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.